Entrepreneurs do it wrong. We actually have some entrepreneurs that will jump straight from starting a business into engagement. It's not that it doesn't work. They get people that want the product. Now they have to go build the system to support the product. And they don't have the necessary things to tell them that they're about to crash. Systems allows us to do that. Having the right communication schedule, having the right KPI. Bad entrepreneurs look at what happens at the end of the year. A better entrepreneur will look at the month and then the best look at it every day. If I had one thing to everyone take away from this, since it's the thing that I worked on the last 90 days and I've just seen drastic transformation information. It, it's What's going on, Wealth Builders? Today, I have got my business coach, Gary Harper, with me. And let me tell you, he has just come out with a new business operating system called Rise, which we are using in my company, which we are implementing at Wealthy Business for all of our students and clients. And it is changing businesses, making them more efficient, um, just making the hiring process easier and making it simplified for what you need to do to scale. And I'll just tell you guys this, you know, every quarter Gary comes inside of our business for a full day so that we can just see the holes and everything else that we have. And it seems like every quarter we just keep getting better and better because we're identifying these holes. And so we're going to talk about the things you need to be doing in your business every quarter, every day, the processes and helping you identify what stage of business you're actually in so that you know the things you need to work on for your stage. So this conversation is going to be really good. Make sure you get your notepads out because there's going to be a lot of great things um, for you to learn. And you're probably gonna have to watch it back twice because there's going to be a lot here. So I got none other than Mr. Gary Harper. What's up, man? Hey, man. How, how you doing, man? I really appreciate you having us on again. And we've been on here before. But Ryan, it's always a pleasure being on your show. And you're changing lives, man. You got so many people out there. Every day I talk to somebody, text me and says, hey, you know, if you talk to Ryan, let him know he's changed my life. Hmm. And I appreciate that. You're giving back. This past week's been great. WealthCon's been amazing. Yep. People aren't coming to WealthCon. They're missing out. Uh, we met a guy just this morning for breakfast, tax accountant. And he's like, I've been coming for two years. Wow. He's like, I've never stood in line to meet Ryan. I don't know why. <laughs> I've never taken a picture with him, but he changed my life. Wow. And uh, Greg Taylor and a phenomenal man. And he's like, he literally changed my life. Wow. So thank you for doing that, man. Thanks for investing back in people. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. So speaking of changing lives, you have definitely changed my life. Um, you know, since I hired you four years ago, right? Yeah. I hired you right before COVID. And, you know, at this point I was already, you know, a multimillionaire and I'd flipped a bunch of houses and, yep. you know, all these things. But I knew that I was kind of stuck. And I knew that things weren't running properly. And we were finally starting to have like our first like breaks in the business where I'm like, huh, this isn't ending up. Why is this happening? So yeah. I ended up hiring you. And, you know, you came to my office for three days. We literally just tore my entire organization apart, put new people and new seats. And yep. um, from there, it became clear to me of, you know, why I wasn't scaling the right way yep. and, and what was happening. And from there, you know, we ended up executing all the things that, you know, you were helping us do. And, um, you know, 2020 ended up being like a very big breakout year for me. Mm -hmm. You know, we made more money than ever in real estate um, because I had built the business through this way. Yeah. I was able to step away, start creating content. And then, you know, everything I have today is because I was able to automate my businesses and focus on content over here. And then, um, yeah. You know, the last three years have been more of the same, just continuing to, you know, execute. And then, you know, I'll, I'll end up falling off track a little bit. And then you're like, bro, no, this is what you got to do. And I'm like, oh, I don't know how I forgot that. And then, you know, it's just the, been this thing. And, you know, it's amazing to see, um, you know, what we've been able to do. And, you know, so much of it is, you know, things you have taught me. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm honored now that, uh, you know, we've we've been able to partner together in wealthy yeah. business and teach these same things to all of our students. And, you know, we just did it at WealthCon and mm -hmm. people's lives are changed, but, uh, you know, it's cool. And it, and it, it, you know, I guess even better is that now we have a new framework, which we're working from, yeah. which is rise and, um, inspired you know, I, by you though. Mm. I mean, it is right. Like you look back at the last four years, we had to piece together operating systems. Yeah. As your business coach. And it was like, and stop like there's five phases of a business we come in and we start working with you and it's like you're missing this piece all right we got to go to this operating system and get it and then go to this piece and go to this operating system and get it it's like man like there's nothing out there that takes you through all five phases of business properly and bridges those phases to each other without jumping from one operating system to the other 
And so like it honestly, like your story and your journey and honestly rising up to reach your purpose. And it's like, okay, like we see this happen. Yeah. I'm tired of piecing all these things together. And then there's an entrepreneur out there that, I mean, they're going to go figure out all these different pieces. Yeah. You know, people are watching this podcast and you're stuck in stage one or stage two or stage three. And it's like, what do I need next? Yeah. Because originally we had started on EOS, which yeah. a lot of people do. And, um, you know, it's a good operating system. It is very good. And to your point, what we realized was, okay, EOS is still missing these components, especially for a guy like me yeah. who's starting to scale bigger and who's doing it in kind of like a new way. Right. With social media and marketing and sales and right. EOS doesn't really cover those things. Well, it's because it's almost a 20 year old operating system. Right. You know, businesses and operating systems pre COVID, pre 2020, they're missing the millennial push. Yeah. You know, 2020, 51% of the workforce was taken over by the millennials. And so it's just a different world. Right. So like using an old operating system in today's world isn't going to fly. It's not going to get you there. So whether it's weak in process or it's weak in finance or it's weak in engagement, marketing, brand expansion, you know, it leaves you guessing. And yeah. that's, that's where we get frustrated as entrepreneurs. And th let's be honest, you know, when you confuse an entrepreneur, you lose, right? You can't confuse an entrepreneur. They're already trying to figure it out. So yeah. you got to make it simple. Yeah. And the same thing is true with, you know, a confused buyer doesn't buy, right? Doesn't. So like a confused opera or a confused entrepreneur, uh, you know, they're not going to implement an operating system. Right. They're not going to scale. Like they just don't even know what the problem is. Yeah. And you got them jumping from one operating system to the next and complexity and language. They all say similar things, but they have different terminology. In Rise, we got really simple with it. You know, we got very practical, tactical. I heard a lot of things about here's what you do. You need to do this. Right people, right seats. But like how to do it. Mm -hmm. was missing now a lot of these operating systems and in rise i feel like we didn't just teach the what we taught the how yeah you know and then we brought together and we created these bridges from phase to phase that no tell you how to tactically go from one stage to the next in business and uh you know rise is it's an operating system so you should have an established business already yeah right we're not teaching you how to like get an llc and how to start <laughs> this thing right yeah, yeah and uh and i know you have a passion for wanting to do that and yeah. and wanting to help entrepreneurs in that area as well and i think entrepreneurs are going to be blessed by what you have coming down the path yep. for them mm -hmm. but like once you're established and you're making money you have a proven product you have a proven concept you know what happened ryan so i was in corporate america for 10 years 10 11 years yeah successful executive one executive out of the year eight out of ten years on all these trips, you know, paid expenses, all these things. And I got into real estate and I'm like, I got to offset my taxes, right? So halfway through my journey, making this money, got to offset my taxes. And a lot of you guys watching the show are doing the same thing. They're getting, they're supplementing their tax burdens with real estate. It's really wise to do, but you know, it looked like an investment strategy. I never treated it like a business. And I get into like 2008 and it's like, I'm running this thing like the wrong way. I'm not running it like a business. And you know what it did? Successful at running Fortune 500, not successful at being an entrepreneur. Mm. They don't translate well. No. It's established over here. It's not established. You're, you're just following protocols and yeah. things that are already in place. And they're there. And they're, it's easy to manage something that's already been implemented. Right. It's hard to figure out what you need implemented, mm -hmm. right? I mean, down to the basics, like an accountability chart, an organizational chart, a process ownership chart, you know, the basics of a business, it's already there in a corporate American environment, right? So I found myself ne needing these necessary things, these basic tools and needing to put them in my real estate business. And because I didn't, I'm ashamed, man. Like I did great in corporate. I filed bankruptcy in my own personal business by 2011. Wow. And I was like, man, I, I feel like an imposter because I'm doing great in corporate, but I can't build my own little business, you know? And so a lot of things factored in that 2008 economy factored into that. But honestly, if I was using Rise, I would have saw it coming. Right. You know, um, and here I am in corporate America and I'm grinding away. I, I go to a, one of our largest clients and I'm presenting on our RF, to an RFP request for pricing, trying to get them to renew with us for 10 years. And I walk in, I'm crushing it. And if you notice, I like black. Yeah. And I had this black shirt on and had this beige suit. And I walk in front of my boss at the time. My boss is like, what are you wearing? And he's an old school guy. He's like, where's your white shirt? 
I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm younger. I'm not, I'm not trying to wear like the white shirt and the tie. I'm trying to look a little bit more, you know, young. And he's like trying to match my generation. And he's like, no, you need to go buy a white shirt. I mean, I don't want to buy a white shirt. I want to wear what I'm wearing. He tells me we're going to cut this meeting short because you're going to get a white shirt before we go to a client. Mm -hmm. We go in front of this prestigious client. I walk in front of him. I don't change my shirt. I present great session, all that. And, uh, and my boss afterwards is like, I'm like, great presentation. He's like, man, honestly, all I saw was your, your black shirt the whole time. Mm. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I've got this business over here at home that I want to run, that I want to be in. And I'm stuck in this corporate America job, but I'm too scared to take the leap, the jump, because I'm not good at running a small business. I'm good at running a big business. Yeah. And I'm being dictated to on what I'm wearing every day. Yeah. And I remember going home that day and I remember writing this guy's name down and like stabbing it with my pen, you know, because I'm <laughs> like, I want out of this. I want out of this dictatorship. Yeah. And in my book, uh, Purpose Arise, the first chapter is a, it's a fable, but it talks about that story. I don't, I'm telling it through another guy's eyes, but yeah. it's my, it's my, it was my push. Yeah. Like, what's my purpose? What am I trying to do this for? And then I realized immediately, man, like if I'm going to start this business, if I'm going to do it the right way, I'm going to have to have the right resources. Mm. I'm going to have to have time. I have to give it my time. I'm going to have to have money, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to need people to help me. Yeah. But who are those people? What do those people look like? Yeah. And that's what we did in Rise. We like, we help you navigate that journey properly to finding the right people. Yeah. Right. Where should you spend your time? Right. And how much money, you know, too many operating systems far in the operating system. Do they introduce finances? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like the fail. number one thing starting out. Yeah. yeah. How much money I got, you know, what, do I, can I even afford to hire somebody yeah. right now? When can I afford to hire that person? Right, right. You know, we were implementing other operating systems for people and it was like, we were hurting them to a degree because we're coming in and building out this organizational charts and things like that. And it's like, all right, man, you shouldn't sit in these five seats. Right. Go hire somebody. Yep. But if they weren't ready to hire financially, you know, so we brought right in rise. We brought that part because it's a resource. Yes. Finance is a resource. Mm -hmm. So we brought in way up front. Yeah. How, why? Because, you know, I failed, you know, as an entrepreneur, I needed to know how to build this properly. Yeah. And then you know what happens, man, is you hit a plateau. You, you're, you've got the time, you've got the money, you've got the people, right. And you're starting to build this thing and the resources are in bloom and they're product selling and you've got all this working for you, but then you get people that aren't inspired. Yeah. You know, and people want to follow a cause. They want to be inspired to be there. Right. And it's like now, like, how do I attract more people? You know, we're at WealthCon this week, Ryan, and I think you could probably have 100 people come to work for 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 your yeah. companies. Yeah. You know why? Because you have a cause. Mm -hmm. You have a purpose, you know? People find a purpose and then find the person, right? Like, can I follow him? But they start with a purpose or a cause first. And so I, in Rise, comes back around to inspiration. You know, what kind of culture do we need? You know, how are we inspiring? I tell Susan, um, it's hilarious. I always know when we're plateauing in resources because we get the phone call from like the fourth or the fifth person we just hired. And they're like, hey, did you make a decision to do something? Did you guys decide to do this, this, and this? I'm like, yeah. Like, dude, you never told me about it. Right? Because mm -hmm. we're not communicating properly our goals. Mm -hmm. And part of inspiration is setting the right goals and communicating those goals and inspiring the people. Yeah. And yeah. so we get plateaued, we get stuck. We don't inspire our people properly. Mm -hmm. And then systems, right? We At some point you want to let go. Yeah. I don't know about you, man, but I, I didn't start a business for it to own me. You know, I don't want to just be employed by my companies. And so I found myself getting stuck and letting go and how to let go. You know, you know, we've worked with, uh, we've worked with a couple thousand businesses now in yeah. the last eight years. And I think one of the things, and I think this is where we came in with you, Ryan, you did a phenomenal job, resources, time, money, people. You had multiple businesses, right? You're making money. You're great at sales. You're a phenomenal marketer, by the way. You're inspiring. Even then you were inspiring. You know, people wanted to be around you. They wanted to follow you. You know, you had an inspirational story from going with baseball and going to, you know, flipping couches and like, man, this guy can get it done. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's like, now it was like, we got to let go. You know, we got to start expanding the model and uh, coming in and working with you and seeing that transformation and meeting structure and documenting your processes and your procedures. And and I always tell people systems side of it all 
is about letting go without losing control. Everyone knows that my favorite way to build wealth is through real estate investing. That's the reason that I started Wealthy Investor, where we've trained thousands of students. But here's the thing. I've noticed that so many people fail to get started in real estate because they're worried about the money. They don't know where they're going to get the money to buy a house or flip or handle their renovations and things like that. And so they just never get started. I want to change that. And that's why I created a brand new free course that goes over five different ways that you could buy houses without using any of your own money today. And I'm going to give you it completely for free. All you have to do is go to wealthyinvestor.com slash podcast. I've made it specifically for you. The moment you go to that link, you'll be able to go get access to it and learn how you could start buying houses today without any of your own money. And if you're somebody who already has a real estate business and who wants to scale, we want to help you too. You can click the link below and book a free strategy call with our team if that's you. There was a story I read and it was about a plane that was flying and these, uh, you know, this pilot wanted to put the plane on autopilot. Yeah. And he did, but he, he didn't realize he put it on autopilot to land mm. and a small plane and it starts, uh, starts to land. He doesn't even realize it because it's gradually going down. Mm -hmm. It ends up hitting top of a mountain, Damn. crashing. You know how many entrepreneurs we run into every single day that are on autopilot to land? They've let go too fast. They let go too much. And they don't have the necessary things to tell them that they're they're going about to crash, right? And systems allows us to do that. Having the right communication schedule, having the right KPIs. Yeah. You know, KPIs aren't about telling us just the results. They're about telling us things aren't working. Yeah. And one thing I'll add to that too is, you know, as we're talking about this, right? You have resources, which is the first, you know, it's the R and rise. Yeah. And we talked about, you know, I was there. I already figured out how to make yeah. money and all that. And then we add inspiration, you yeah. know, learning to build company culture and all those things. And, you know, I was already inspired core and core values and all that, you know, and then I got to the systems part, which we're talking about now where it was like, well, dude, you don't have any KPIs. You don't have any organizational charts. You have no SOPs. You yeah. have no process maps. You have none of that. And I'm yeah. like, I don't even know what those are. Yeah. And you know, I'd reached this level of success without knowing any of that. Yeah. And so, you know, there's a lot of successful entrepreneurs who, you know, they, they, they never do any of that. Like you can run and gun and make money. Yeah. You know, you don't need an operating system to make money. Right. But you do need it to get your time back. Yeah. And to scale. Right. And to, you know, build it the right way. Right. And you don't, you never truly let go without those things. Yeah, you can't, it's impossible. And right. if I didn't, do that, there's no way I would have got to this next stage we're going to talk about because I just wouldn't have enough time. I would have still been on seller appointments. I would have still been running the marketing. I would have still been closing deals and, yep. you know, all those different things. And so, um, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a, uh, a sales and marketing guy at heart and I'm a product guy at heart, but I'm a systems guy, um, as like my, my side chick, yeah. because I'm just like, it's so important. And I've realized it and it's like given me the most freedom of time right. more than anything. Right. Sales and marketing are the engine that, you know, push revenue and help us grow. But man, if you don't have the systems, you have no freedom. Well, here's the other thing we find is that what happens if people do resource and inspiration, right? They're constantly talking about, I want my time back. I want my time back. I want my time back because they don't get to, when they get the systems, they haven't truly learned to let go yet. Right. And so we get people stuck in that stage. And here's one of the things that I found. And, and, and honestly, it was, it's testimony of my life. You know, you get into a business and you can grind to the point where you just don't even know anymore, like why you're doing it. Mm. Right. And you and you get so busy chasing after your purpose, you never fulfill it. Right. And here's why is because people don't build down properly with the right KPIs. And so in Rise, we put their importance on purpose. Yeah. Right. So we actually created the key purpose indicator in yeah. Rise. Yeah. Because I want people measuring it. And if you measure the purpose indicator and you build profits off of that, here is how much profits we need to make, the key profit indicators of your company, right? And then you build down from there to performance. How many contracts, how many closings do I need to have? Performance. But then we build down one step further that most operating systems don't. And it's the process indicator. And the process indicator allows us to tactically every single day measure whether or not things are working. And let me add to this, because this is the most important thing that I know is going to make us grow in 2024 yep. is what you just said, the process indicator, because you called this out in our Q4 of 2023, where you're like, Ryan, yeah, your team's keeping some KPIs and everything, 
but you're being told about it, you know, too late. It's yep. already done. So you're always operating on a quarter by quarter basis of saying, well, dang, dude, why did this quarter not go the way we want? Oh, well, these are the things that happen. All right, let's make all these changes. And so the team, you know, knows like every quarter, you know, after I meet with Gary, you know, there's like all these changes that are about to happen. Yeah. And you're like, it does it, you know, if you're doing it daily with these process indicators, that's not going to happen. Right. Because you're not going to be surprised. Right. 90 days from now. And you're not going to be, you know, having to make drastic things. It's like, you know, you're going to be t- making those tweaks every single day on the fly, because right. if this number isn't getting hit, we know something is off. 100%. And we need to change it. So I think it's easy for people to like, just kind of gloss through what yep. we're talking about. But I want to point that out that if you don't know what's going on daily in your business, it's impossible to make adjustments, right? right. Like bad entrepreneurs look at what happens at the end of the year, Yep. right? They're like, oh, well, what did we end up making? They don't even know the whole time. They don't know anything. They're like, oh, well, you know, we did this. And then they come file their taxes. They're like, well, actually, we didn't even make that much. Like, right. PL yeah. doesn't match my back pocket. Yeah. We, where, where's the money? Yeah. So, you know, that's like what a bad entrepreneur does. They look at the end of the year, you know, a better entrepreneur will look at the quarter, yeah. you know, a better entrepreneur will look at the month, right. a better will look at the week and then the best look at it every day. Right. And they make most of their decisions based on, you know, profit indicators. Yeah. Right. Which is at the end of our cash conversion cycle. And I'm telling you in the last two years, I've seen more real estate entrepreneurs shut their doors because their cash conversion cycles can be anywhere from 45 days to 12 months. Right. And if they waited till the end to make adjustments, it's too late. Yeah, because, you know, the new way you're going to create revenue is going to now take another 45 to 12 months. You don't. And I actually it's so funny you said this because I had this talk with some people at WealthCon where I was like, look, yeah, I know you've been grinding and struggling the last, you know, 12 months, you know, having to come out of pocket to close deals. I know the feeling I've had to do it, too. I'm like, I get it. And I was like, kudos to you. I'm not going to say who it was. I was like, but kudos to you because you didn't lose any properties. Yeah. You know, are some investors mad they haven't gotten their money back yet? Yeah. Sure. But you still own the properties and you're still working at them and you're coming out of your own pocket to make sure it comes. Like I commend you for that. They may not commend you, but I commend you. And you know, if they're not happy and the market turned and everything, you know, I I'm just like, look, it is what it is, right? Like if you're doing everything you can possibly, it is what it is. And it's like, you know, to a degree as an investor, right? You, you want to like always make money, but you're no one has a hundred percent success rate that I know in investing where they don't ever not lose money. Last time I checked, there's not any like guaranteed investments right. that are guaranteed to go get this return or that. And, you know, yep. you know, even if you go put your money in a U.S. treasury, you know, it's still not guaranteed. It's guaranteed, you know, as long as the fact is the U.S. dollar is the strongest currency on earth, which by the way, you know, there's things changing with China and everything else. So, you know, people need to also understand that like no thing you invest in is guaranteed. No, it's not. I mean, every day is not guaranteed, right? Yeah. Every day is that way, you know, and this is why the key process indicator is so important to me, because if I would have understood this in 2008, 2011, I wouldn't have had to file bankruptcy Mm. in my real estate company. And so like a lot of great things are born from failure. Right. And so I've tried to take now my knowledge of corporate America coaching in there and then practically add it to an entrepreneur, guys. And, you know, if there's one thing, Ryan, uh, there's we talked about a lot, but there was one thing that I would tell an entrepreneur today, like, you better know, you better know your process indicators. Yeah, I would. If I had one thing to everyone take away from this, since it's the thing that I worked on the last 90 days and I've just seen drastic transformation, you know, it, it's that it's yep. having those daily process indicators. Yep. We had a team in San Diego and uh, it was middle of 2020, uh, right around April. And I started to notice and they had done a great job with process, performance, profit and p- purpose. And I started to know the process indicators weren't being hit. And it's not right. It wasn't like they just fell off the, the cliff. They went from how is it selling in four hours, you know, and getting listed to sell to like a week. Mm-hmm. And we just saw these small adjustments and you know, like not as much calls coming in. The conversion rate changed just a little bit. Right. Um, number of appointments that were being set, 
conversations happening. They were just going, they were just changing a little bit. I mean, not enough to even like sound the alarm just a little bit, but that little bit of change was an indication the market was starting to shift. Mm-hmm. Right. And as we, we kept a close eye on it, cause we had eyes on our process indicators and week by week, we saw them shifting just a little more and a little more. And I went to the visionary and I said, Hey, listen, it's changing enough that we need to look at the processes and see whether or not we need to innovate our processes right now. Right. And he's like, but we're still making money. <laughs> of course, because you're at the end of the cash conversion cycle of the process working nine months ago. Yes. But in nine months from right now, we're not going to get the same results because our process indicator, the very beginning of your cash conversion is telling you it's starting to change. Mm-hmm. And that gentleman was smart enough to make the adjustments and he didn't really feel the change. Mm. Right. The teams I worked with that were like, no, but we're still making money. Yeah, they're living in the past. They were living in nine months ago, yeah. seven months ago, five months ago, whatever the cash conversion cycle was. And because of that, they're not here anymore. You know what's interesting about how you say that is that I'm kind of always forward thinking and I'm like, okay, you know, everyone's talking about this and that, okay? And so I'm always thinking about, man, how's this going to affect business in the future? Right. Because decisions I make today are going to affect the future. Right. And it's not like it's going to f- change anything today. Right. Like, you know, big decisions. And, you know, there's there's so many new technologies, right? I made the decision on social media four years ago to, like, take it serious. And now, four years later, people are like, dude, you know, how do I get started and everything? I'm like, bro, you can still start today. But, man. I was saying it four years ago, too. Right. You, you shouldn't have waited for the result to finally happen because we know that the cycle of, you know, gaining traction on social media could be years. Yeah. Right. And I go, so now you're two years too late. You yeah. know, you could have did it two years ago. You just didn't. Right. Right. So, you know, there's that, um, you know, you got blockchain, you got AI, you got all these new technologies. And it's like. Yeah, you can embrace them two, three years, four years from now. Wait for somebody else to figure it out. Yeah, and like you can embrace them then, but guess what? You're going to be late. You're going to be too late. <laughs> so I got to admit something to you. Okay. I don't know if I've actually ever said this publicly. Okay. I got on TikTok like a week after we started working together. Hmm. And there were 30, and here's how I heard about it. My nephew who's 12, 13 years old, had this massive following on TikTok. And so it was like a kid's platform, yep. right? And I don't know, in my mind, I kept thinking to myself, the kids always lead this, right? Like <laughs> they always pick, kick off the next great thing on social. So I'm like, I'm going to get on and try it. I started posting on TikTok. I get into a mastermind we were both a part of at the time. And yeah. I posted there, would you follow me on TikTok? And I have 40 people ridicule me for doing this. That's a kid's <laughs> platform, man. What are you wasting your time? You're a business coach. Why are you wasting your time doing that on a platform that's for kids? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I deleted the account. Mm, you got embarrassed. I did. Mm. And then you get on there and you're out there crushing it on there, right? Yeah. And I'm like kicking myself, right? Because yeah. I literally shut it down. Yeah. But even uh, then, I'll say, even while I was crushing it, there was still ridicule. You did. For probably, I don't know, two years. And then finally, after two years, every entrepreneur is like, oh, man, I got to get on TikTok. Right. I got to make reels. And I'm like, yeah, you should, dummy. Like, (laughs) And I felt I was probably the the stupidest one because I literally let that ridicule take me off of TikTok. It was crazy looking back on it. It it is definitely a skill not giving a crap what people think. It is. I think I stopped looking at my TikToks. <laughs> if you're watching this show, my guess is you're probably an entrepreneur who's trying to grow your business. And for me, the best thing I ever did to grow my business was build my personal brand on social media. It's allowed me to get more revenue. It's allowed me to raise more capital and it's allowed me to hire better talent. And if you are not currently creating content for your brand, you're missing out and your competition is. So, If you want to learn to grow, my advice is to create a podcast. Now, there's a lot that goes into building a podcast and why I believe it's the best way. So I've actually created a free training that I want you to go check out. If you go to PinedaMedia.com slash podcast, you can go access the free training right now and see how a podcast is going to be the best decision to grow your personal brand today. So go check it out by clicking the link below and I'll see you in the training. After systems, yeah. E, we have engagement. Well, I mean, not everybody, let me say this, not everybody is meant to go to engagement. Okay. I mean, I feel I always say you have to earn the right 
to go to engagement. And what is engagement? Engagement's expansion. It's 10xing through your marketing, creating the brand, you know, creating 10xing your sales. So you already obviously have that. You have a product that's making money. People are excited about your product. But now it's like, I want to go from like servicing my community to servicing the world. I want to go from servicing my backyard to having 15 stores, or I want to expand outside of my market, or I want to do it in five states versus my backyard, my, you know, my, my county. And so you have to have a good brand to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. Wealthy. Yeah. Prime example of that, you know, and I, two years ago or a little, a little less than two years ago, you hit that stage. Yeah. And you were like, it's time, you know, we've got, we've done a great job of resources. We've done a great job with inspiring those resources. We got goals and vision and we've got uh, core values and great culture. And now we've let go and we're delegating properly. We have the right meeting structure. We're documenting our process, our procedures, our policies. We're dialing our numbers in. Mm -hmm. Now the system can support it. And we talked about this the other day, you texted me and you're like, hey, you made a statement. Is, is it true? Basically what you said. And I was like, you know, entrepreneurs do it wrong. Sometimes we actually have some entrepreneurs that will jump straight from starting a business into engagement. Hmm. And then what happens is it does, it's not that it doesn't work. They get people that want the product, but then they get stuck and they now they have to go build the system to support the product. Yeah. And then they have to get the people because now there's high demand to support the system. Yeah. And then they go back to resources. Do I have the right people? <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just, it's not that they do, they do it too fast. It's just do it wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's what I admired about you is like you, you earn the right to go from face to face. Yeah. Like if I just think about my career yeah. of going through rise before it was even a thing, right? right. Was that, you know, okay. I was in the resource stage and this is when I was like, you know, I was already starting to flip houses and I'm like, all right, I'm having some success. Let me start you know, figuring out how I can go raise more money to buy right. more houses. I was still like a one man show. Um, you know, I eventually got like one guy to help me start doing some project management mm -hmm. because that was what I hated. And so, you know, I'm just thinking like, how much can I pay this guy? You know, how much capital do I have to go buy more deals? And, you know, we're wheeling and dealing and doing great. Yeah. So then, you know, I start hiring people and I'm like, look, I want to do a hundred deals this year. And, you know, I need to go hire people and inspire people. And like, we need to have a culture. So I get my first office and, you know, this is probably in 2018 when I was yeah. in this stage and, you know, I'm doing well, you know, in this inspiration stage, I was doing a hundred deals a year. Yeah. And it was in 2020, like I said, that I hired you and really understood like, oh crap, like I'm kind of still doing this inspiration thing wrong. Number one. And number two. People you know, were kind of in the wrong seats. Yeah, people are in the wrong seats. Right. Um, we got to really truly define our core values and what we are. And now I need systems to back this up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the main thing, you know, back in 2020 was that system stage of like, all right, let's do systems and, you know, really create an organization. Right. And so we did that. And it just so happened to coincide with COVID and the rise of TikTok and social media and all these things. And you know, I'm just thankful, you know, and it's, it's not luck or coincidence. It's, right. you know, all part of God's timing. I agree. And, you know, I'm thankfully brought us together because that happened right before COVID. So I already understood what had to happen over there. Right. And then this opportunity came up with COVID and social media where I'm like, you know what? I do feel like this is good now. Yeah. And we did it really quick. I, I don't want people to think you can do it in <laughs> a month. Right. And you're going to be good. But we, we executed it pretty quickly. And then I was able to step away and just go hard at social media and just, you know, basically go into the engagement stage. Right. So you did it quick in two years, because if you hadn't done everything you'd done in two years to get there and position yourself properly to let go. Yeah. And go focus on social media, then it wouldn't have happened quick. Right. Is that my point? And so like, that's the thing that I think some people miss. And somebody said to me the other day, like Ryan kind of came out of nowhere. I'm like, no, it took Ryan four years to come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that's where it happens because you did the phases, right? You got resources. Did we have to tweak? Absolutely. Yeah. Did we have to tweak inspiration? Absolutely. Yeah. But you are poised to let go. Yeah. Right. We made the adjustments, you know, and that's what I, that's what I tell everybody. You know what coaching is? Why we started Wealthy Business? It's co coaching is all about making the right adjustments. Mm. You know, uh, coaching comes from experience. It comes from seeing patterns. Yeah. 
That's what wisdom is, right? Wisdom is seeing patterns and then taking that wisdom and those patterns you've seen in 3,000 companies and being able to coach somebody on those adjustments that you need to see them make. Yeah. Right? Well, you know, one thing you brought up that really hit home was that, yeah, coaching, there, there's there's very different things from like coaching and information mm -hmm. and teaching. Yeah, coaching and teaching. Great point. Yeah. So let's just say there's coaching and teaching. You're like, okay, what's the difference? Teaching is, you know, essentially, you know, what I'll do on stage, mm -hmm. on a YouTube video, whatever, mm -hmm. right? Like, I can't talk to you directly in your own personal case. I don't know what's going on with you. I am just out there teaching like a teacher. Right. And, you know, I'm going to just give you great information. I can teach you all about, like, this right now is teaching. It is. Right? We're teaching you about how your business needs to progress the proper way. And it's amazing. Teaching is great. I would guess less than 5% of people can take teaching and actually execute right. without a coach. Take action. Right? The other 95%, and by the way, I'm part of the 95% because I still needed you, right? right? Maybe it's like 99% can't. It might be high. Yeah. Maybe 1% actually could. The other 99%, need coaching and coaching is where, yeah, we're giving you the information, but now we're going to provide help with execution. Right. And accountability and accountability, which is part of helping execution. Right. right. And so many people don't realize this, like ideas are a dime a dozen. You know, right. people say, oh, dude, I had that idea. Why didn't you do crap about it? Oh, well, you know, well, you didn't, you didn't take action. You didn't take action. You didn't execute. Right. The same thing is true. It's like flipping a house is actually pretty easy. Yeah. Like I keep the information of flipping a house is very simple. You can yep. find it on YouTube. I've done many videos about it. Right. The fact is, why does 99% not execute? Because they don't have accountability. They're not being, you know, forced to execute. They're not being encouraged. They're not being inspired. They're not around the right people who are thinking big. And, right. you know, so coaching is so much more than information. Well, and it's also the ultimate adjustment a coach does because they see those patterns. They see you getting stuck. And when we're looking at ourselves, we don't always know how to adjust ourselves. Mm -hmm. But when some, a coach can see it, they know how to make the right adjustments to you to get you unstuck and help you grow again. And I think that's what's important. Here's one of the things I, I say a lot. Be careful hiring a teacher that calls himself a coach. Mm. Right? Because teaching comes from knowledge. I can give you knowledge. Yeah. You can buy my book right now and go teach it. Yeah. Coaching this book comes from 21 years of experience mm. and seeing patterns, mm. right? And I, I'm actually like a little frustrated with so many people that charge really high prices and they call it coaching. It's teaching, mm. right? People come to you, Ryan, because you've taught them enough, their value and what you've, they've learned. And then they come in and they want to get close to you. They want to play golf with you. They want to spend time with you. Why? Because they know that you have experience. Yeah that can then coach them and adjust them. Yeah. And one thing they could say, hey, I'm stuck in this one area. And you're like, I've talked to 1500 people that have that same problem. Here's what yeah, you need yeah. to do, right? Yeah. That's that's seeing patterns. I would actually say then, now that you're saying it this way, I think there's actually three levels. Okay. I think that there's teaching, Yep. which is what we're doing now, YouTube, books, that's teaching. Then there is, let's say, I think there's this, next stage and i'll just call it consulting okay and this is what i think i do when i'm on the golf course or somebody would hire me for one-on-one -on -one or something like that where i'm consulting you okay tell me the problem all right that's what you got all right this is literally what you need to do i already know how to do it i've got the experience your i i understand your unique situation you know i've been through it yep these are the steps you need to do here's who you need to meet here's who you need to hire boom right mm -hmm. to me that's consulting coaching I would say in the framework of the way I'm thinking about it, I don't actually do. Coaching is the daily accountability, the weekly mm -hmm. accountability, the, hey, did you actually do it? You know, are you taking action? You know, okay, tell me how it went after that. Like, what are the next, you know, you know, it's, it goes back to that process it indicator does. we're talking about, right? To me, that's coaching because to be truthful, I ain't a coach as far as that goes. Yeah. I'm not sitting here holding people accountable. Yeah. Not one of our students do I like, you know, call every day, bro, did you do it? Did you? No, that ain't what I do. But I do do a lot of teaching. Yeah. I do do a lot of consulting. Yeah. And high level stuff that's going to make a huge impact. But I'm going to rely on you and our coaches. Yep. 
sure. to go out and execute it. It's funny you say it because here's the names. This is what we have it in our companies today. We call it an in the business coach and an on the business coach. Okay, I'm an on the business. You're coach. an on the business coach. Yeah. So am I, right? Yep. I'm not holding your hand. No, you and you, yeah, you don't ever check in like right. every day and just make sure we're doing our thing. Now we have 17 coaches. Exactly. That meet with you every week or bi-weekly, depending on our program. Yep. In wealthy business. Yep. That or in the business coaches. They're tactically making sure you're tracking what you're supposed to be tracking and your process indicators line up. Executing what executing. the on the business coach said to do prescribed yeah because i mean it's one thing to come meet with you play golf and you're like this is easy here's what you do go do it yep right and then to have somebody every week going did you do what ryan said to do right yeah, exactly and so we do you nailed it because we actually we just call it an in the business coach versus an on the business coach mm -hmm. and, and then there's the teacher yeah you know which is what we're doing now yeah i mean come to wealthcon you're gonna get taught you're gonna get taught a lot it's, of valuable things but the one thing you do at wealthcon that they most people don't do is you give the back end to like but i've got programs and coaches yeah so if you want to be serious about this and you want to take action on what you just learned yeah go get in on a program yeah and that's not for everybody not everybody's meant to do it not everybody's going to be you know going to take action like that but the ones who do are going to succeed. Well, I think that most people, um, I mean, here's the hard part, right? I see three types of people. Okay. Let's just say you got the person who's just getting started. Doesn't have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Let's say you have the person, um, like me who, when I first hired you was already successful, but right. had never really bit, had coaching. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you have the person who's just bought in. They're like, bro, I want to be coached anytime and every time I want to, I want to have multiple guys and learn as much as I can. Right. So like on one hand, the broke person who's just getting started, look, dude, it's tough to like make a commitment to getting coaching on something you've never had success at, you know, you, you might not have a lot of money. You're making a very big investment in something far bigger of an investment for you than, you know, me, if I was going to go hire somebody for a hundred grand, mm -hmm. right. That, that couple of thousand bucks is so massive for you, you know, for that person, you know, it's tough, but Look, your odds of, and I tell our sales team this, I'm like, look, never tell anyone that they're guaranteed to have success with us. That's not true. Not true. I go, but what we can do is increase their odds of success significantly. Right. Right. And everyone's version of success is different, right. but let's say they don't hire us. Okay. And they've been in the same place the whole time. Obviously they have no skills or else they wouldn't be broke. Right. So let's just be real. All right. When I get people who are like, well, bro, I think I'll figure it out myself. I'm like, no, you won't. The odds just say what they say. They do. You would already be successful if you would. Right. I don't know what else to tell you. You ain't successful. Why do you think you somehow will be successful now with no new change in your life? Right. It's, it's harsh reality, but it's true. And I think that's one of the people, you know, people have to come to that realization faster. Yeah, they don't. And then it takes years of realizing, oh, you know what? Ryan told me that like years ago. Yeah. And I'm finally now realizing he was right. Yeah, right. How many times have you heard this? I've had people come up to me before and say, Gary, if I would have just hired you three years ago when I first met you. Yeah. I'm like, well, but let's not live there. Let's, let's, like, let's, let's just, you know, let's move on. Right. Let's get there. <laughs> yeah. You know, but we all know what to do. Yeah. We've been taught what to do. But, but I, you know, I do have sympathy for those people because look, it, it is a hard decision, right? Like I get it. So it's not that like, I don't want to sound like a hater or demeaning. It's just, if you're listening to this and you're in that position, Look, you have no guarantee of success, no. but let's just say if you do nothing, your current odds of success are 1% or less. Yeah. That's the reality in business. Yeah. Okay. If I could help you have a 10% chance of success, that would be a 10x increase in odds. Yeah. If I could help you have a 30% chance of success, that's a 30x increase in your odds. Like, dude, I'll take that all day. Yeah. Whatever the case may be. It's funny when we talked and we were talking about price and all that, I said, honestly, Ryan, if my program can't help you get one more real estate transaction. Yeah. Right. And I think that's what people look at the, look at it the wrong way. Sometimes they look at like the, the ultimate level of success before they make, they decide to take action. Mm -hmm. and like, can it get me to the ultimate level of success? But anything you do in taking action is going to get you to the next step. Yeah, you don't need to get to the end. No, and it's a compound effect at that point. Yeah. It's a building on those things. Even rise, it's a building on. You You get great with resources and you get better inspiration. You add on the systems 
And then you've earned the right to expand. Yeah. Now you've earned the right to tell your story. You've earned the right to give a brand. You've earned the right to reach more people. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's funny you say that because I've told many people that in social media, they're like, bro, I'm thinking about, you know, doing this and talking about business. I'm like, what have you done? They're like, well, you know, I'm just, I'm like, well, why would I listen to you? And they're like, uh, like I would never watch your stuff. And I just tell them straight up. I'm yeah. like, what do you have to, to say? That's any type of value for what you're saying. Yeah. Right. You don't know anything. It's and funny. Then, you were telling me this story the other day about a guy who was like, I've done 150 deals. You're like you and everybody else. Right. Like, yeah. He's like, but I feel like everybody can learn from me. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I mean, that's the reality, right? Like people are like, well, dude, I should be on the podcast. I did a hundred deals. I'm like, yeah, you and everyone else. Yeah. Like, you know how many guys have done a hundred deals in their career? Yeah. I'd be doing a podcast every hour the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> like it ain't nothing special. Yeah. Like, and so people need to start. Okay. And this actually leads me to the second person, you know, who is already successful. That person right there. Hey, I'm already having success. I've done a lot of deals. You know, I don't need coaching. Like I'm doing great. Or I've already been through this. I don't need anything else. And I'm like, uh-huh. Okay. How are you going to learn like a new thing that's going to take you to the next level? Like yeah. you can keep doing the same old thing and have at best similar results. Yeah. But more than likely, if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. And so if you're not learning new tricks of the trade and people who are adapting and moving and shaking, the movers and shakers are going to go take your business. Yep. Yeah. They're just going to plow right past you. Yeah. But those guys are hard to reach because they have the resources to do it, mm -hmm. but they have pride in the way. Yeah. We were in a mastermind yesterday, your mastermind, and I decided to sit down in one of the little se segments with everybody, about 15 people. Yeah. And they're all sharing their challenges. And uh, I had an opportunity to help some of the people coach them. Yep. We got to one person in the session and it's like, here's my problem. People started giving feedback. He's like, nope, that won't work. <laughs> and then I started giving him some feedback. He's like, yeah, I ain't going to do that. That's, that's, I'm not going to do that. So that's not going to work. He's like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Honestly, I don't even know why I said that's a problem because I'm already successful. Like I was just trying to give you guys some things and he wasn't, he wasn't willing to learn yeah. and grow yeah. because his success has blinded him exactly to his inefficiencies to continue to grow, mm -hmm. you know? And, and that's ego. And that's one thing I'm right about you. I, you're, one of your core values is no ego. Mm -hmm. And Perry's like, well, that's wrong with Ryan's core values. Yeah, Ryan's very confident. Confidence mm -hmm. is not about not having ego. You can be mm -hmm. confident. Yeah. You can be humbly confident, right? Mm -hmm. Humble is the fact that yesterday at the end of your very successful wealth run, you came up to me and was like, what do we got to do to get better? Yeah. That's humble, mm -hmm. right? And I love that mindset. I love your mindset of like constantly never stopping growing. Mm -hmm. right? We're always trying to get better. Yeah. And we had so, one of our um, all-stars, Daryl out there right now, um, who you had talked to as well. And this is, he was like, this is my, he literally just said it out there. He's like, this is my fifth wealth con. Yeah. And he comes from London Yeah, to come. He's part of all-star. And he was like, and every time I come, I think there's no way that it can get better. Yeah. And he's like, it just keeps getting better. And I'm just shocked that, that it's possible yeah. to keep getting better. And I was like, well, one, thank you. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, exactly. And I go, number two, it's like, yeah, I go literally, you know, we're doing our MVP day right now. I go, we're testing new things this event. Yeah. You know, we tested MVP day on the last day instead of the first day. We tested a three day event instead of a two day event. Yeah. And I said, and at two 30, when you guys are done, I'm meeting with the team from two 30 to three 30. Cause I want to go over all the things I saw that we can improve on that, you know, while they're all fresh in my mind. Yeah. And, um, you know, I go, that's, that's how you do it every 90 days yep. and make it better. Cause we don't, I don't have enough time to be waiting. Like, Oh, we got a full year to like prep. I'm like, no dude, if it's every 90 days, I mean, it starts literally the moment it ends. Yeah. And I, I want to say this, people are watch you right now, Ryan. And they were saying, man, Love to have that guy's success. Love to be where he is. But the truth is, you had and you did, you made those right adjustments through each step to get here. And so, like, when everybody watches you and they're like, man, he he got successful overnight. That's not true. No. It was a very deliberate, very tactical adjustments that you did from resource, inspiration to systems, earning the right to get to engagement and expansion. And uh, if people want to be right here with where they are, watching your journey, take away not where you are today, take away the hard work you put in for four straight years of getting here. Yeah. 
You know, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm proud of you. I appreciate that. Yeah. And also, it's kind of also really cool. Um, we actually just got the domain for wealthybusiness.com. Yeah. So that was the missing domain of the wealthy empire. So I got wealthycreator.com, wealthyinvestor.com, wealthykingdom.com, wealthyway.com. Yeah. And then the final piece was wealthybusiness.com. It's crazy. So That's now awesome. we have it. And, you know, I think everything happens in time, right? Sure. Because, you know, we just launched the Rise system and everything. And so now it's like, all right, now it's time to go take this yep. to the masses. Yep. And so for anybody who does want to be coached, you know, consulted and coached, yep. not just taught, right? you know, go to wealthybusiness.com and we'll help you out. But, um, you know, the last piece of that puzzle, like for the people, right? You know, you got the the person just getting started. It's a tough commitment. They probably know they need it, but mm-hmm. it's just tough to get it's over like that when. hurdle, mm-hmm. right? Then you have the guy, like we were talking about, who has a lot of pride. And so for him, it's tough because he he does have a lot of success. So, you know, reaching a successful person and telling him like, bro, like there's way better ways to do this is you got to be humble enough to receive it. Yep. And then you have the person who is that they're constantly trying to improve. They understand that they're not even close to their potential. Mm-hmm. They understand that they will not reach their potential without help, without coaching, without the right consultants, without the right, you know, people who think bigger and help inspire them. And, yep. you know, those guys are the most successful I see. And they're yep. the ones that, you know, are usually on the stage at WealthCon and, you know, they just crush it. Yeah. It's a four reasons. Four reasons we fail to scale. Well, number one's fear. Yep. And teaching will help you, giving knowledge helps overcome fear. I see people walk away from events like this, listen to podcasts, why they're replacing fear with knowledge, but mindset, the mindset. And that's where these people live. They live in the mindset of the first person's like, when do I need it? I'm yeah. not sure it's now. It's a mindset thing. Second person is I'm successful already. Why do I need it? So mm. one's a when, one's a why. Yeah. And the third person who's usually the most successful is the one who's created the right mindset. And they say, I need it right now. You know, and you they can even say, what, what do I need now? That's it. It's what improve. do I need? So it's when, why, and then what? Yeah. And get to the what faster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, Hey, what's the thing I need? How yeah. do I, I know there's something else out there that's going to help me get to this next level. And you know what I love about you saying the what? I say this almost daily. Statements close the mind. Questions open the mind. Mm. You know, it's funny. I was just telling them out in MVP day for this podcast of the story of how I question everything I do. Yeah. Everything. I'm like, is this the best thing for me to do? Is this the most optimal use of my time? Mm. And um, like little things I question. And it's through questioning that you start finding new ways of doing things and new solutions and problems that you didn't realize were there. Right. And so I was just using a, a super simple example that no one would really ever think of. And I was like, man, how could I like be more efficient with my wow. time in 24? Right. And so I said, well, you know, I probably drive like 30 minutes a day mm-hmm. and I go, I don't even like driving number one. So what would happen if, and this is my first thought process, I was like, what would happen if I just Ubered to work there and back every day? And I go, it'd probably cost me like 40 bucks. I was like, okay, well, my time's worth a lot more than 40 bucks yeah. for 30 minutes. You know, I'm not, uh, 80, $80 an hour is not what you're going to pay me. So I was like, well, already there's a win. Yeah. And then I was like, well, safety wise and consistency wise, I don't want Ubers coming out of my house every day. I was like, so what if I, you know, got my assistant to drive me around everywhere, Mm -hmm. right? I made him pick me up at home as part of his job and then take me home. And I go, that could actually work. I could. And then I was like, but his car kind of (laughs) sucks. And I was like, okay, what if I bought a nice car that he could drive and pick me up in and then take me to work. And I was like, all right, that will probably cost like, you know, maybe a thousand bucks a month. Like yeah. I'll go lease something that's, you know, nice and comfy and whatever. I was like, okay, you know, it's kind of expensive, but it's probably worth it. You know, it obviously would be worth it. Yeah. But I was like now, okay, if I'm going to do that, what, okay, let's, so now I go down a, di- a different decision tree and I'm like, okay, let's assume I do that. Cause I I'm liking where this is going. Yep. I'm like, what else could he do? Cause like for 30 minutes, buying this guy a new car is like, that's kind of, um, there's gotta be something else we can do with it. And so I'm like, what if now 
all these podcast guests that come in, yes. we're picking them up at their hotel, the airport. We're taking them to the airport in this nice car, giving them yes. first class service, and they're just getting the best experience ever with us. Experience. And I, I go, it. now it's worth it. It is worth it. I, I go, that. that makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> I love it. I love that. Yeah. But that's that's a simple question of why do I drive? Yeah. And by the way, I drive a two hundred thousand dollar car. Right. So it's not like not like you don't enjoy it. To yeah, yeah. Degree. But I'm like, why do I drive at least on the weekdays to work, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's great. You know, it's that question. It's a question of constantly learning. Yeah. Constantly growing. And uh and so if you can ask that question, go back to the statement. Statements close the mind. Questions open the mind. Mm. You know, great leaders ask great questions. Yeah. So it keeps us innovating, keeps us growing, keeps us improving. You know, it's with a guy this morning for breakfast before we came. And he he says, I just don't, I don't know that I'm ever going to get there. It's like, don't ever sit. Don't, don't, yeah. don't make statements. No. He no. says, what do you mean? I ask the question, how am I going to get there? Exactly. Right. And that's the right way to do it. Yeah. So with Rise, obviously you have yeah. the two books. I do. So book number one, why don't you explain them and show, yeah. show the camera these so, covers. So I actually choose this one first. I always tell people, read this one first. Okay. A purpose to rise. It's a fable. It's a fable. It's a fable. There's not many business operating system fables. There's not. There's only one that I read that's, it's not an operating system, but it is an amazing business book called The Goal. Okay. I have not read that. After it is an amazing book. Okay. I love reading. I read about two to three books a week. Cool. And so this is one. It's a fable. It's about a real estate entrepreneur. Okay. He may or may not come to WealthCon. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There we he go. He definitely goes to a big event. Okay. Right. And he hears a business coach speak from stage. Yep. And then he meets the business coach and the business coach signs a operating system book. Okay. And then he goes back and he writes in the book, resources, Matt, resources. And Matt's quitting his job and he's starting his own company. It's real estate. And he gets plateaued. He hires his sister. He hires his brother. They got this and they plateau, right? They get, they are all stuck in different seats. They don't have money. They can't raise capital. All the things you were talking about, right? right. They plateau. They hire Reggie. He comes in, helps them overcome that plateau. Then they get an inspiration. They realize some people they hired aren't the right people. Mm -hmm. And Bob is like stealing from the company, changing things, you know, hurting the company. And then he goes in the, getting the right systems, right? Meeting structure, right? KPIs, tracking things, and then engagement, right? So this business coach comes back every quarter to help adjust this family and help them rise to their 100%. Really cool twists in it, really cool stories. Every story is based in truth. I've either experienced it myself and it's a story about me or it's a story about a customer that I've coached, yeah, right? Yeah. So really fun story. I like this one. I feel like it inspires us, right? Well, and you and I talked about this at the event. I was giving you some coaching yeah, you about were. being a marketer and, you know, stage a showman. Yeah. And uh, I was like, hey, Gary, I think you need to tell more stories. Yes. Like you're, you're, you always go to the tactical side of your brain, which I you and I, I, I can relate with. But I go everyone else out in the audience. They don't get it. They don't get it. They don't even understand why it's important. Yet. Yeah. And you need to give them a story to help them see. Absolutely. That. And, Great uh, advice. Great advice, by the way. Thank you. But you were like, yeah. You're right. I don't know why I don't do that because I wrote a fable <laughs> for that reason to help people understand why they need it. Yes. And I was like, you know, Gary, sometimes <laughs> you just need to be coached. <laughs> sometimes it's the stuff right in front. You need the adjustments. Yeah. You right? don't see things that you do. Now, what I expect is for some, at some point you'd be like, next time I see you, like how many stories have you told? Yeah. How many places you spoke? Right. Like, cause yeah. I want that accountability. Yeah. But this book is a fable. It's a purpose of rise. It's Susan and I both wrote this book together. Yep. Definitely need to update our picture on the back already. Yeah. But, you guys uh, lost a lot of weight. You guys look great. This one is a textbook. This is that tactical side. Yeah. This is 344 pages. It's uh, about 66,000 words. It's very much, you know, you can open the book wherever and go straight to the section on. I need help. It's this truly area. like a curriculum yeah. type thing. I mean, there's books out there like scaling up and traction and things like that. Very similar. Yep. Uh, definitely still has stories in it. More appliable stories of like how you do it. Now, the one thing in this book that I've written is I have written uh, examples for you. So where a lot of books just teach you the what, they don't teach you the how. And yeah. we got very much in the how. It's a little bit thicker because of that. Both of these books are coming out audible. Proud to say both of these books hit bestseller in less than 24 hours being launched. Uh, we're going to be actually be in, in, in New York next week. 
The books are being featured on the NASDAQ, doing a little bit of a book signing there. And then next Wednesday, we're actually going to be on ABC cool. and speaking about the books on ABC. And, and uh, you know, really cool thing. There's this guy named Ryan Pineda. There we go. That's baby. actually featured on the back of the book there, there and his go. quote of using the RISE business framework. So, right, uh, Ryan, I appreciate you very much. Yeah. Uh, a lot of these things would come from uh, just our journey together. Yeah. And seeing, you know, you, you, you demand next level. Yes. And everybody around you. And so I had already worked with hundreds of entrepreneurs, but working with you, it was a little different because it's like, I better go find these pieces you need. Mm. And now I had been doing it for years, but the operating system that we were in, they didn't give us our solution. Yeah. So I had to go out and piece and play a lot of stuff to help you grow to your hundred percent. And so I'm in the process of doing that. I'm like, everybody needs this. Yeah. So this past year, just about a year ago, I sat down and started writing these books. Yeah. And so we were 12 months into it and uh, it took us 20 years to write in 12 months. Yeah. You know? And then they're going to say, dude, Gary came out of nowhere with this. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what else should you say to that? <laughs> yeah, right? Sure. Sure. I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I, uh, it's true. Right. Like for anyone who doesn't know, all of my businesses start from solving my own problems. Mm. So you know, like wealthy investor. I, I never wanted to be a coach. Yeah. I still don't call myself a coach, you know, like I don't hold people accountable. Um, and that's why I never wanted to do education. I was just like, yo, I'm busy flipping my own houses and building this thing and everything else. And so I built this thing. And then once it's built, it's like, well, I can easily give this to so many people. Right. And, and teach people how to do it. And so like, that was how coaching came about the same thing with wealthy creator. It was like, well, I'm going to have to learn how to do social media. So, you know, I go in the lab and spend thousands of hours doing it. And I'm like, all right, well, I built all this stuff for me. Let's give it to everyone. Hmm. And then that's the same thing with Rise. It's like, look, at the end of the day, we've been working together for four years, developing this thing. Yep. And it's finally honed in. Yep. Four years for me, 20 years for you. Yep. And it's like, all right, well, Let's give it everyone else now. Yeah. But I still just use it for myself. Yeah. Have to. Yeah. I mean, that's where great things are born. They're born out of necessity. Mm-hmm. And we had necessity. We had to fulfill a need. And we're like, everybody has this need. Yep. So I think that's where great things are born. I want to, you know, honestly, uh, God is God has inspired this. He's brought this thing, whole thing together. Um, and we do it for a purpose. Yeah. And that's to do a good work. Yep. Books are about getting a good work in everybody's hands. Yeah. And so that ultimately we can give back to God's work with what we do. I love it. So, well, dude, I just appreciate you so much. Um, Every quarter I'm excited to obviously sit down and break apart, you know, everything in my business. And I'm excited that, um, you know, everything with rise is impacting a bunch of business owners and, you know, people in wealthy business and, you know, across the world. And, um, you know, I'm just excited to see uh, how many more we impact in the next couple of years, five yeah. years, because I think that it's going to be big. I believe this is just a very small start to a very big movement. Yep. So. so for anybody who wants to learn more about Rise and be coached by Gary and the team and, you know, actually have true in on the business and in the business coaching, yep. that's what it's all about. So definitely check out wealthybusiness.com and uh, you'll see me be pushing this a lot more going forward now that it's built out and tested and proven. So um, I'm excited for that. And for anyone else, um, go follow Gary. We'll link to all of his socials down below. He's got a TikTok again. So, you know, you you can go check out his TikTok. He, you know, he hung around me enough and he's good now. So um, (laughs) definitely inspired. (laughs) Other than that, make sure you're subscribed to this and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Where is your family set up for life? Where do you get to live your life that you always dreamt? Because it's not making 300 grand a year. You learn how to build a business and sell it. That's where you change family trees. Think about percentages instead of dollars. Why would even somebody bother you with a $10,000 to 